take ki runga, he take ki raro, tēnei te take katakato, he take nā wai, nā te pai o Paripiko. Ko mihi ngā rangi a hau, e take ana te reo rāhiri, ki a mui a koutou i ngā take whaitikanga o te wā, rarau mai anō. Welcome back to Party People, brought to you by the Public Interest Journalism Fund. It's Tuesday, November the 30th, and this afternoon the National Party has anointed a new leader, Christopher Luxon. Here, Kofiding Apai, is that a good decision, Tau? What yeah, do you think? I, I think whether it is or isn't, uh, the, the jury is still out. But here's the thing if you don't gamble, you don't win. And I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of the saying from a Komatua I know. And he said, every gambler knows that the secret to survival is knowing what to throw away and what to keep. Now, that's uh, Komato from North, Kenny Rogers. Um, uh, wonderful, wonderful man. This has been, it, it, it sort of ended up as a damp squib, you know? It just, just, it just happened, and that's what happens in the National Party. There's no blood on the, field, on the floor, and you know why there's no blood on the floor? Because it was all spilt the other day. <laughs> what do you think, Shane? Oh, well, best of a bad bunch, really. You know, um, here's the thing about Luxon. He'll bring some new energy. He, you know, he's not a failed leader. Uh, the other thing is that he will be able to raise money. Him and his best mate, John Key, they'll get together and they'll raise a lot of money, and he'll probably be able to attract new candidates come the next election. So, you know, they had nothing to lose by picking Luxton. Uh, there is that risk. You know, the guy's spoken very rarely in Parliament. He hasn't really uh, launched a new policy. He's not, uh, doesn't seem nimble on his feet, but, you know, the the proof will be in the eating of the pudding. He's barely got a half a dozen uh, tweets this year. Yeah, that's right. But as I say, more importantly, you know, I think his general speeches have been like, there's been three or four, and I can't remember anything of substance, and uh, that's probably why he's gone with uh, that combination with Willis. La La one thing Shane did say last week, which mm. he's right on today, is that the deputy needs to be female, mm. and, it, and it's Nicola Willis. Yep. Uh, what's that combo like? You picked her? Yeah, yeah, and because I, I, I think I think she's uh, she's one for the future. I think if uh, if Luxon uh, falls over, and I don't expect him to fall over, and I think you know we've seen the last of the leadership challenges this side of the election. Won't happen in, uh, before the election. But here's the thing of this about this: John Key enters the race, basically says to Lux, uh, to everybody, rings on the phone, and says, "If you uh, uh, elect Luxon." I will go and raise some money for you. In fact, I'll go and give you some of my own money. Um, but that, and that's back to the days of pay to play. That's that plutocracy. That's the rich people running the show while all the, while all the poor ple plebs don't get looking. Yeah, what do you think? I, uh, well, I, I think that, you know, they've got a new leader, they've got a new deputy leader, but the paru is still there and it's still strong. Got to get rid of Collins because I tell you what, she will be buying any time. There might have been a deal done, but I don't think she'll stick to that. And of course, what's going to happen to the president? So, you know, that core paru is still within the it's National the, Party. It's the president. And, they've got, and, they, and they've got to push that pus out. And I don't know if they're prepared to do that. <laughs> yeah, Lance. Should, should, should yeah. they have expelled her? Could they have expelled her? How does it work? No, no. They, it would be very difficult to expel her. Um, and, and so rather than get into a, a bun fight over that, Keep her, but but I but I'm I, I'm I'm wanting to know what were the deals done. Yeah. Where's Simon and all of this? Yes. Where you know where's Cersei? Mm. Where's Tyrion? Yeah. What's in it for Tyrion? Where are we going to see another uh, a red wedding? Most probably not. Because there was some suggestion there'd be a decision over the weekend, but no, still right up to three three p.m. or two, two p.m. before Simon Bridges pulled out. There was, so, pre there was pressure on yeah. Simon early this morning to yeah. basically say, this is the last day, go and meet with Luxon, work something out um, and, and, and see if you can't uh, come up with a, a, a position. And they, and they did. Yeah. And, and look, it was only last night, he was saying, this is m not my first rodeo, but the horse didn't come out of the chute today. Eh? Yeah. And as he was walking up to the steps of Parliament, he said, you know, I'm still on this race, and I still feel sort of comfortable. And then that old tour he's saying sort of eventuated today, eh? and that's a courteous interruptus. Didn't quite get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right, you know. Where's, uh, you know, last week we were talking about Dr Shane Reti yes. a lot. Where's he in this? Do you know where, which side he would have gone? Oh, look, I, I, I think that he's the unfortunate 
sort of collateral damage. The guy didn't do anything wrong as a deputy leader, but no, he's just not quite that dynamic and I suppose attached to uh, the Collins sort of regime. Uh, I can't see why he wouldn't hold his his ministerial, uh, sorry, his his uh, health spokespersonship. But um, maybe in those top three or four roles, they might want sort of new people. So he he may have paid a big price. And you know what? This could be the beginning of his parliamentary, the beginning of the end of his parliamentary career. And you know, I think if I was in the Nayamahu, I would give him a call and say, "Why don't we? Uh, why don't you go and uh, sit in Washington D.C. or, or the U UN? Because he's really good at that sort of stuff." Can you put a word in for me, bro? I'll put a word in for you. I'm, I'm interviewing you tomorrow We're all putting a night. word in for you, Tay. Yeah. Where do you want to go? Oh, anywhere, basically outside of West Auckland. <laughs> Kaio it is. Not Moirewa? <laughs> hey? Moirewa? Oh, no, 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 I'm not allowed, not allowed back there. Not in the red, yeah. not in the red uh, <laughs> traffic light, that is. Um, t tell us a bit uh, uh, about Christopher Lux and what does he stand for? I don't know. We'll never clue. I mean, he's, uh, honestly, the, uh, uh, the brother over here has, has said it succinctly. He's a, he's a clone, but he's not a very good one either. I mean, you know, he would, uh, I mean, uh, at least Key went out in the world and, and, and made his money and made his mark, blah, 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 blah. Lux hasn't done that. What is he? What does he do? Can he win back the middle ground? I think the winning of the middle ground is that you do have to be in the centre. You can't allow yourself to go either left or right. You've, you've got to be, you've got to anchor yourself in the centre and make sure that those that you want to join the party and vote for you aren't scared of doing that. Mm, last, last week we talked about, well, actually, Tau had a great mm. analogy about the two sides of national. Mm. Where does this new leader sit in there? Well, you know, I think he's fundamentally conservative, both socially um, and probably economically too. Uh, he will try to use his business credentials, but we'll see how that, that gets him. Um, but, you know, they've, they've got this marriage of convenience in terms of the conservative and the, and the liberal rump of the party. Let's see how that sort of plays out. And uh, the thing about an opposition, you can you can defer those type of issues because you know those key votes happen very rarely over sort of uh, social issues and consciousness. I think what he will do is he will ditch the uh, racist rhetoric and dog whistling that Collins uh, that Collins Collins harvested up because it mm. really hasn't got them any votes. And I don't think that's his natural um, space anyway. The, the two have been described as the formidable team. Um, he will be the 16th national leader. The longest serving was Sid Holland, who mm -hmm. reigned for 17 years, quite a contrast to Todd Muller, who was 53 days. <laughs> will, will, will this combo ha go the distance? You know, I think, I think it will. I, like I said, I, I, I think if they're, if they're clever enough, and I think they are, I think this combo will go well uh, uh, past the next election. Um, if they, it, it all depends on whether they win or lose. If you lose, well, you might have another go. Yeah. But who knows? They, they could lose, but get enough ground to do four That's years. Right. But you know what? Four years as opposition leader is, 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 is two lifetimes politically. So That's right. yeah, we'll have to see. Um, people always uh, give benefit of doubt on days like this when people are selected, but things are going to play out. What he does have is he has the benefit of a Christmas break where he can get re um, regather, regroup, meet his key people and, and start the new year. I hope, his, uh, I hope his team, the, the team that he picks, is a, is a vibrant one, mm. you know? I, I we'll hope talk, it's not boring. We'll talk about that soon. Do you think um, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and Grant Robertson would have been hoping for this combination? Will they be worried about it? No, I don't think they're, I don't think they're worried. I mean, all you need to do is look at the polls. Let's have a look, say, uh, March, April, yep. May next year, because that'll, that'll be six months into the job, or over six months into the job, and see where it all... Uh, where it all pans out. I'm, I'm not expecting them to set the world on fire. Uh, in terms of diversity, Tau mm. just raised that before, and you know, a couple of, of the last leadership combos have had a bit of a disastrous mm. um, time rolling out uh, their di well, their, their yeah. top ten. And um, well, the will they care about diversity? And do yeah, they have of course they do. Of course they do, because they, they, they've got some, they've got real issues in terms of uh, that. And it might only be 5 or 10% Māori vote. They've got to win that over. But more importantly, they've got to win that woman vote over. And uh, hopefully, they'll be hoping that Willis will, will help them out with that. I, I think that, um, that if I was uh, Ardern and Robinson, I would probably want uh, Simon heading it rather than Luxon, because, again, Luxon is the no, uh, unknown entity. I think there'll be a little bit cock-a-hoop about it because the last unknown entity failed dismally 
You, you never know um, where you are on the party list because sometimes you're 36 and you shoot right down yeah. to 11. It depends. Sometimes you're 40. It, yeah. it depends who you've backed. Mm. And so, I mean, we don't know who voted for who yet, but uh, who might be lucky in terms, oh, of, oh. Uh, in terms of diversity? I think, yeah, I, I expect Shane, uh, Dr Leti, uh, will be somewhere in the top five, and I would expect so. Um, he's, who are the other Māori contenders? Well, there's Harete. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I can't remember any of the other ones um, because there's, well, there's sweet bugger all. You know, honestly, there's only Simon, and, and he just lost. So who are you going to... In, in terms of a Māori perspective, who is your spokesperson for Māori affairs, Māori development? I, I bet you can't tell me who also it was I haven't, last I, week. Who, uh, along the Kumara Vainei toe, and, you know, our year is pretty close to the Kumara Vainei. I haven't heard of one decent cam- ca- candidate waiting in the wings to run. Well, at the moment, at the I election. think Tanya, Māori, Tanya, Tanya, Tanya. No, Māori development yeah. Um, yeah, Tanya, is, Tanya. is the candidate for Southland. Mm. Yeah. At the present, of, was of, yesterday. All of that, yes. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, isn't that shocking? Yeah. yeah. Well, we I, still Is he a Māori? Mm. I will. No. No, he's not a Māori. He's a bugger power. from bloody Southland, yeah. for goodness sake. Yeah. And he's the spokesperson for Māori, Māori Affairs, for goodness sake, National. OK, so in July there was first reaction to the government's draft document, He Pua Pua, which is the plan to realise, help realise New Zealand's commitment to the UN Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People, which the Māori Party and National signed a while ago. One of those kaupapa put forward is the establishment of the Māori Health Authority, which the former leader, Judith Collins, described as segregation and racist separatism. What position do you think Luxon is likely to take on kaupapa such as this? I, th- I think, first of all, I think he'll go away this weekend and, and, and read up about it. Secondly, I think he'll, he'll come out with a position that's neither here nor there, yeah. that doesn't back himself into a into a corner either way, yes or no. Um, he will talk about, you know, we, we need to have a dialogue, we need to, to, to uh, uh, fix up the problems uh, that, are, that are still there. He will be non-committal. Mm. And I think what he will be also tell you, he won't be as caustic or caustic as as Collins was. He'll take it more of a middle road, I think, in terms of where Reti was at. And Reti said, hey, look, I'm not sure that this Māori Health Authority can work, but what I do know is that hauwara do work and well reasonable yep. hauwara work. Here's so the, here's that's the, the road here's, he might take. Here's the word that you're looking for. If he utters the word gangs, yep. you know he's lost it. Mm. Because Judith blamed gangs for all of New Zealand's woes. The fact of the matter is, let's have a, let's have a look and see where he sits. One of the policies that the National Party, with the Māori Party under the leadership of Sir Peter Sharples and Dame Tariana Turia, was whānau ora. Yeah. And in this pandemic, we have seen whānau ora, you know, exceed itself in terms of yeah. the expectations. So, you know, will they start moving back to some of those kind yeah, of Yeah, I think I think they will. And what the pandemic has shown is that we we where in whānau ora and hauora are well resourced, they work for the community. And why I'm by, by the community, I don't mean just Māori community. You know, West Auckland, Waipareira Trust, done a great job there. Eastern Bay of Plenty, where I'm from, it's tough going, but it's the hauora that are vaccinating everyone because in a lot of Aotearoa, they're the only game in town. How important is that relationship? Um, you know, Bill English used to have great relationships with iwi, with the, with with iwi leadership and even urban Māori, yep. how important is that for this leadership and this new um, national party to, you know, to, oh, to it, start it, those relationships again? It's, it's hugely important, and I think one of the things that they have to do, both uh, Luxon and Nicola, is is actually do a bit of a, a run around of the of the iwi, of, of actually just go and go and have a yarn with them, and find out what iwis are all about, and you know, not in terms of. The, the big ass questions, but the but the fact that hey we could be the government now. What's our relationship going to be? What do you want us to do? What do you want from the national party? What does the national party want from Iwi? And, yes. and also we have a bit of a long memory. We do remember when he was in, in charge of Air New Zealand. He wasn't proactive when it comes to Tamoko. Yep. He, he you know his position on the court wasn't right. one that we were a fan of. So you know he'll have to think about he'll have to think about this. And the other thing is that. You know, the leader of the opposition, by right, used to have a lot of gravitas and a lot of respect. Um, so 
him simply being the leader of the opposition, I don't think it's going to open any doors for him, particularly when it comes to iwi. They will be sceptical. Yes, we think about we talk about the the, the Maori economy all the yeah. time and put about fifty billion dollars uh, price tag on that. And we've just had um, Nanaia Mahuta as foreign minister overseas doing a bit of a trade expose with with Maori. She's won the hearts and minds of Maori. Do you think in terms of trade and business? Oh, absolutely. And also, I think uh, won the hearts and minds of of uh, Pākehā and business, you know, uh, the UK deal, look at the construct around protecting our, our uh, you know, Māori-ness in, in, in relation to that. The other thing is that, um, you know, she's different, she's unique, that Indigenous sort of kaupapa will be of interest to people, and I think she'll open some doors. I think to date she's been a phenomenal, a phenomenal uh, minister. And the other thing is that she's seen as a bit of a peace broker between China, Australia, New Zealand, and the US, and you know what? With the sort of raru raru, raru, raru coming uh, going on around the Taiwanese Straits, you need peacemakers, and the Naya might perfectly fit that. And just in terms of her understanding of iwi and history, and you know all, all those kinds of things, it's going to be difficult for the National Party to find somebody to kind of match her in terms of opposition. Hell yeah! Um, and and um, here's a message to Luxton, Luxton, and Nicola: spend a week and figure out how you're going to pronounce our language. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, always a good thing. Yeah. You know, at least key, uh, uh, English, and also uh, Minister Little, they, they've done the hard yards in those sorts of areas, and, that, and, and that's appreciated. Um, in terms of Nanaya, I think she's been a, a, a fantastic uh, success, not only on the international scene, but also with uh, Three Waters and, and uh, the, the balls to, uh, excuse my language, to do something like that. And also the reorganisation of local authorities in terms of uh, uh, Māori seats, the Māori representation. So uh, you, you, you've got to give her big ticks all along. She hasn't failed in any one of her portfolios. She Not has been transformative. And you know we've got a lot of a lot of um, people that are opposed to three waters, but I still think fundamentally it's important. You know our swimmers are our, our rivers are unswimmable, our beaches are closed down. You know forty thousand stop notices water. We know that it needs an um, infrastructural fix, and local councils simply but, can't but, afford but it. But all the people, yeah. all the people who are opposed to it, are the exact ones that continue to let people crap in our waters. Least in interests. And I think uh, it was the head of Federated Farmers who just said today, whoever's the leader, we just need a, you know, for, for democracy, we need a good opposition to those kinds of cope. But has Nanaya pretty much had, I know she's had opposition from local government and things like that, but in terms of the opposition on those big cope. She had free reign. Yeah. And, and which is, which is it's, it's a bit like the All Blacks uh, turning, turning out to play Manurewa High School. You know, you're going to get free reign. Um, and but 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 here's the thing with the National Party: they better school themselves up, mm. and and change the way people perceive them. Quick, smart. Yeah. And and what was the real opposition? Her real opposition was the apparatus of the National Party, particularly Collins, and that was groundswell. And I'm not certainly saying that most of the groundswell people went around with racist signs, etc. But a fair chunk of them did. And what happened as a result of that? The last. Um, Hui or March or whatever they had uh, down Queen Street was a spectac spectacular fail, fail and failure. So it's those type of groups, like the tax unions, that they need to uh, go away from and go back to the middle. Yeah, there, was a, there was a petition uh, just finished yesterday, and it was a petition to get rid of Jacinda Ardern. Yeah. Less than 5,000 people signed the damn thing. That's shameful. Let's come back to sure. um, uh, uh, the Foreign Affairs Minister, Nanaya Mahi. There's been a bit of criticism of, uh, uh, that she should have raised concerns about, you know, she was at an Indigenous Rights yeah. Festival. She didn't raise the concerns of Palestinians and others. Do you think she should have? Yeah, well, look, I know that it's a complex issue, but I think it's one of the longest running issues in terms of Indigenous rights. I do see it as Indigenous rights. I believe in a two-state uh, two solutions, and I think in that sort of form that she should have raised it, yes. How has she gone juggling, you know, trade and the questionable human rights of some, some countries? Oh, look, um, I, I don't envy any Minister of Foreign Affairs. You know, you're, you're, you're visiting one country you're, and, and people are expecting you to say all sorts of things about this, that and the other. You know, she could have spent 
hours talking about Palestinian, talking about West Papua, talking about all sorts of issues and forgotten about why she was there. Yeah. So, you know, so it's not an easy task and it's not an easy juggling, uh, juggling task. I know that where her heart is, and that is with uh, Indigenous people, and it's just a matter of which forum you... you, you how do we know well, well, which that forum should she? Because, you know, isn't this an opportunity, a once-in-a-life opportunity as an Indigenous how woman? We, yeah, but how, to, but how do we know that she didn't raise it? Mm. This is a question. She, she, she wasn't seen publicly waving the, the Palestinian flag, but how do we know she didn't actually whisper in somebody's ear and say, guys, and we'll I think the her. most powerful... The, the most powerful way she has um, represented in Indigenous rights is over uh, a need for us to have real action over climate change, particularly in the Pacific. What better way to promote Indigenous rights? Kappa, let's talk about uh, the traffic light system mm. moving into red here in Tamaki Makaurau. So the red, um, which means vaccine passes and number limits of 100, uh, and you can see people within your home. So Northland, Auckland, Taupo, Kawiro, Whakatani, or Portiki, Gisborne, Wairo, sounds like so on, Rangitike, Whanganui, Ruapehu. What does it mean for Kawiro? Shane? Oh, it just means that we need to be aware that there's a little bit of sort of liberation around, but, um, you know, we're certainly not out of the woods. And uh, I just think it was just a pragmatic response to uh, ensuring that we do our best to contain it, but um, give people a little bit of freedom. You know, those Māori communities mm. in, in the, up all north and all around yeah. in that belt across up to the east coast, they were calling out for caution. Yep. Do you think the government de delivered that to those communities? Oh, not really, because you can. If, you, if you're double yep. vaxxed and you've got your little passport, you can get out of uh, a red and go into an orange. Uh, or you can go from red to red. So you can actually uh, travel. And, um, but I, you I, can't I, hold a big concert. Yeah, I know, but that's cool. That's cool, but hey, I mean... You and know, that's you what know, they were asking super for. Super spreader events, that's yeah. what they're concerned Yeah, well, there's, there's the one that uh, followed down Pukekohe. Yeah. Um, he's, he was a bit of a super spreader. He's dead now. Yes. Ka aroha. Ka aroha. Oh, um, aroha, all right. Uh, yeah. The orange is the South Island and the rest of New Zealand. Good decision? Oh, well, I just think it's a pragmatic decision. Um, but you know what? I still think, it, although that decision's been made and that means that, you know... I could go down to Kauru, visit the Fano. I'm following Toe's advice. I'm going to stay home this week, this summer, Kapai. and I think more people ought to make that decision. Kapai, and we're like still we? we're still worried about Omicron, the new the new uh, variant. A report this week showed two deaths in South Isolation could have been managed better. Is it, you know, is it good enough? Oh, I, I, don't, I don't think it has been good enough. But uh, and and I go back longer than just the last uh, couple of months, and I think we. I think that's the problem of not having a good opposition, that the questions that needed to be asked weren't asked. Yeah. So, you know, they could have done a, a hell of a lot better than they have. Home isolation is cool if you've got resources, if you've got room, etc. OK, but for many Māori, particularly Māori family and Pacifica families, it's not, it's not just an issue of health, it's about an issue of socio-economic circumstances. And many of our whānau, that ain't going to work. And while we've got a pilot scheme mm. now for home isolation with Māori health authorities in Pacifica looking after mm. those homes too late... Too also, little, too easy, easy, easily to become overwhelmed. And, and the horse you know, bolted. Yeah. The, ho the horse is bolted. Mm. Um, economic support subsidies will not be available in orange and green areas. Do you think that's a good decision? Uh, again, I think it's a necessary decision. I think it's a decision that uh, will, will, may have to be revisited because here, here you go. If you are a restaurant owner and, um, and, and, and you've still got some limitation about who can come and who can go or, or, or concert event organiser, you know, and those people do employ um, people. It means they're not be able to open at capacity, so they, might not, they may need some ongoing assistance. So despite the Māori leaders and iwi asking New Zealanders to stay out of their community this summer, um, they, people will be able to travel. You've got the core here whānau um, who own the yes. whenua around yeah. the Cape, um, asking, well, closing the gates, closing. basically. Yes. Um, and then you've got the Prime Minister asking iwi to work closely with police. Do you see this as... I mean, I've seen people on Twitter tweeting with that they're off to the East Coast and the Uriwa, uh, to Uriwera and things like that. Do you think there's going to be a problem? I think there will be the odd problem, yeah. um, and 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 it, it's got to be expected, you know. And this is this is about about New Zealand recognising the rangatira tanga, the mana mm. mana uh, tangata of 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 all of those people, you know. So the kohere whānau, the in in Tararua, uh, the uruera, 
people up home. Mm. You know, they, they, are, they, they are wanting to protect what is their alive. They don't want to see, they don't want to see no super spreader just because some bucker or, or whoever jumps in his car and, and wants to go and tip your hide and have a, have a jack. I think Toa is right. I think there will be isolated problems, but I don't think it's going to be some of Kiel's. And I think they were re relatively, um, uh, you know, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep a check on the situation. If you don't yeah. have to travel, don't. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Um, tweet of the week, we're well, right there. My turn. Yeah. Well, your turn, bro. Okay, my one is not a not a political one. It was one that was specially sort of made up for me. It was uh, from Ethan Griffiths, who took a little a little cut out of the Beatles um, documentary Get Back, where they were taking the mummy the piss yeah. out of John Rawls. And I tell you what, you know when you made it big, when the Beatles are taking the piss out of you. That's true. Mm. No, I, I heard it. I it watched was fantastic. it. And I heard it, and I, I had to rewind it just to hear again because I laughed. It was a burn. They burned John, John Lennon. John Lennon burned yeah, John Rolls. Yep. There you go, yep. made a big. Yeah, better be burnt than to be ignored, eh? Yes. Well, the fact is, they knew uh, him. John Rolls is still alive. Yeah, that's true. And they what's, knew him. What's your, what's your kōrero? Oh, can I read it out? Yes. This is, this is from somebody I, I never supported. This is from Golras, Graman. Yes to getting gang, uh, guns off our streets. Hard no to arming police as a response. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and, and I think if you, yeah, you have to, I, I love that tweet. I think finally somebody down there in Wellington yep. has got it right. Yep. Don't be overawed with what you see on the paper about gun violence just because an incident happened in West Auckland, mm -hmm. you know, yesterday and somebody lost their life. Um, it's, it's not as bad as, as a lot of people make out. And let me just give you the simple fact. The most armed police in the world are in the USA, Per head of death population by gun is something like 100 times bigger than New Zealand. So it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, that's it for this week. Party peeps, don't forget you can also tune in via RNZ's YouTube channel and Facebook. E mihi ana ki te puna whakatonga rewa. Nā nā tēnei kaupapa i utu. What's up this weekend? I think a little bit of time and reflection for the National Party and uh, perhaps a few cocktails and inviting the mates over over the weekend. Golf. Golf. Yeah, you're allowed on the golf course. Kia ora. Ki konei au whakahuki ai te mauri o inei kōrero ki te mea ngaro. Hei raurangi tekina ake anō ai e tātou. Kia tau i a te ea o te mauri o tēnei take ki runga. Kia koutou i roto i o koutou nā tini marae kainga. Taku takie kaheke. Kia ora. Kia ora.